Today, you're going to extend your ass, I mean, your sass. Hey everybody, what's up? Gary Simon here. So today we're gonna to be talking about a SaaS feature and that is called Extend. Now sometime when you're dealing with uh, CSS in a larger project, you maybe have a lot of rule sets that share repeating properties and that's something that you don't want. And so Extend can help you with that. I'm gonna show you the actual project here um, that we're gonna do. And you can see that there's some certain elements that uh, share certain properties with each other, like the font size of this element, this type element, and this type element down here. There's some margin and padding that are similar. And so we're just going to use that example to fully feature and describe what Extend does and how it can help you in your workflow. All right, so as always, make sure to subscribe and let's get started. Before we begin, Linode makes it easy and affordable to host your website, your portfolio, your online store, and more on whatever technology stack you use. Getting up and running is fast and easy with one-click app installs like WordPress and Drupal. With back-end access to your server, customization and scaling options are all but limitless. If you just need something small like an online portfolio to showcase your work, Linode has you covered. If you need to manage tons of clients' websites and reliably serve them to millions of visitors, Linode can do that too. So sign up using the link below in the description to get $20 in credit on your new Linode account. All right, so here's a quick Adobe XD um, template that I created or mock-up. Um, and this is what I ultimately want to create for the most part. And so what you want to do when you're thinking about uh, this specific topic of SAS Extend is, you know, what type of elements in your user interface share commonalities? Um, so for instance, uh, the text here, uh, if I double click into this group, we'll see that it's Montserrat, of course, 24 points with a 40 uh, line spacing height. Um, this one, same thing, Montserrat 2440, and down here, Montserrat 2440. All right, so this would be a good use case, perhaps, to have those uh, three uh, elements, which would be font size, uh, also um, line height, and I think one other, for adding it in an, into an extend. Um, there's also uh, padding. So if you think about this in terms of three containers, this could be a container, like right here. This sidebar could be a container as well, and then maybe this footer could be its own container then it could also, even though it's kind of not evident in this document, they could also have uh, equal white space, which is defined by padding inside of those containers. Even though this one has a lot of white space, but we could still define white space on the container itself and then just move this stuff in based on its parent container. So let's go to our, uh, this is what it currently looks like because I do have the HTML already structured. Um, just to look at the HTML and describe what's happening exactly, overall everything is inside of a single div class of container. Um, we also have a section here. The section is in reference to you know that, that left area, which my desktop is doing that, a very annoying thing again. Someone told me I need to learn how to use the alt tab. Is that it? Oh, there we go. Oh yeah, I like playing uh, Modern Warfare. Um, but yeah, uh, right here we can see uh, that that would be this section right here. We also have our sidebar and finally our footer. All right, so in our section, there's just an H1 with a paragraph here. Um, and then we have a card container with cards in each uh, right here. So you can see that there's, there is a paragraph right here outside of the card container. And if I alt tab over here, we could see that at least we do have um, this this is the paragraph right here that's in reference to the paragraph that's outside of those card containers and it's larger, all right? So that's just something to keep into consideration uh, when you're writing your CSS. Uh, this obviously is something you wouldn't want to include with the um, extend property that we're gonna use. So right here I have a main, oh, and oh yeah, there it is. So I have a main SAS file and I'm watching it now with the uh, plugin called live SAS co compilation and or wait, is it compilation or is it compiler theory? I'm always saying compilation for some reason. Um, and then live server right here is also being used on my index.html. So I can click open with live server to show you that currently quite ugly page. All right, so what we'll do is I, I'm gonna go ahead and extend this just a bit. And our main SAS, I just have a body element right now just um, to get that boilerplate crap out of the way. And I'm gonna get, um, just define some sort of like, you kind of 
consider them just really generic um, global rule sets that aren't really um, contained with any other rule set. So what I mean here is if we look at our page here, we see we have like a UL with the ugly bullet points. I'm gonna get rid of those just by default. So UL, list style type is none, and then also padding is zero. So that'll get rid of that. All right, so now it just looks like all the other text. Um, we'll also reference, um, yeah, that's it for now. I think now we're gonna reference the actual container. So container, uh, we're gonna use display grid for this. So grid is always fun. Grid template columns. We do three fraction uh, units and then one FR. So that's in re relation to that big white area where we have the, the H1 tag. Um, and then the one FR would be the sidebar. Um, and then grid template rows. By the way, I'm not making this responsive uh, just because it's extra work that's not necessary. Um, four FR, I say, for the height of that main area with the heading and then one FR for the footer. And then we'll do grid template areas. And we'll say, uh, we'll just call this main and then posts, which is the sidebar and then footer and posts. So that footer goes all the way down. All right. And then finally, we'll set height 100 viewport height on that section. So now if we check this out, this is what we have roughly. We have our sidebar over here. We have this stuff over here and then we have our footer down here. Okay, so now we'll go ahead and reference our section. All right, so our section, uh, we can put in, uh, we'll define the padding here. So the padding, I want to create, so it's sim simply because the one thing that's good, that these three main sections and those sections being the, um, let's see here, the, the section right here, the sidebar and the footer, the one thing that all of those will have in common with each other is an equal amount of padding inside of those containers. So in that case, it's just one property. We can just use, um, you can either use a CSS uh, custom variable or you can use the SAS variable. So I'm just gonna use a SAS variable and I'm going to say layout padding 3M units, all right? And I'm gonna say here, layout hyphen padding. Ooh, that's why I should look at my screen while I'm typing. Layout hyphen padding. Uh, and then multiply it by 2.5. So what that will do is just take the three M's and then change that to nine M units. Um, so now we have a lot of white space in here, which is consistent with the, the template. All right. So also outside of section, we're going to select the very first paragraph element because that's the one that is larger right here, right? So we only want to select that one. And the way we do that, we can say ampersand and then P. So greater sign than P. And then what we'll say is font size will be 1.5 M units, margin top will be zero, and then margin bottom will be 1.5 M units. So now, I hate how this keeps on popping up. So now we have that fixed. Now, of course, we have, in terms of UI design, a issue with visual hierarchy, but don't worry, we'll fix that soon with that H1 element. Um, and then we'll say card container. We're gonna say display flex. And that way, those card elements are all lining to each other. So we're starting to get there. Now we haven't got to the part where we need to use extend yet, which we'll, we'll do in a second. Um, yeah, in fact, we're gonna do it now. So we're gonna say card, and again, card is the uh, this element right here. So it's in the card container, and then we have card inside of it. So going back to our SAS, I, one thing that you could do is you could either put card inside of here and nest that in there, um, but when you do that and you go to save and you check out your main.css, you'll see it'll say card container. It'll, it'll look like this, your rule sets, card like that. So if you need it specific to the card container, you can include it. But if you don't have to, I wouldn't include it because it makes the code a little bit less in terms of uh, the main.css file. 
So the card, we're gonna say, um, what properties do we want the, the text element to be consistent across all these? Um, so this one, this is where we're focusing on right now. So what properties do we want this to have that it will share with others? So like I said, it has the same font size and also has the same line spacing as well. Uh, so let's go ahead and focus on that. So what we could do, and this is like the bad way, I'm gonna show you the bad way. What we could do is say, we'll say font size, uh, 0.9 rem units, we'll say line height, 1.7 M units, and then we'll say padding, maybe they'll all have the same padding too, right? Um, and then what we can do is, I. we can also go ahead and say, let's see, margin right, 0.5 M units, and maybe I'll give the card its own box shadow. All right, so let's save that. This is what it looks like so far. So what we can do now is, is and again, we're still doing the bad way. Um, and this would be the incorrect way because it's just verbose. You're unnecessarily repeating yourself. Um, we'll have our sidebar and our sidebar contains um, an H3 element, as you can see down here. And so we wouldn't want to include this stuff right here because it'll affect the h3 element so what we'll do is we'll come inside and we'll say um let's see here we'll say li because there's a, the li elements and then we would have let's say we just want to take these two right here and change that to 2em by the way so now we have a situation where yes we've created the code to make those two elements consistent right here and here but We've had to repeat it twice in our um, in our our style sheet here. So you don't want to have to do that because what if you want to change that? All right. So this is where the extend uh, comes into play. So I'm going to get rid of this just temporarily. I'm going to copy this and get rid of that. And I'm going to come up to the top underneath my property here, my variables, and I'm going to say I uh, we're going to use a placeholder rule set. So you do that by first defining this um, percentage sign and then a name, something that's relevant. So I'm just gonna say text and I'll say font size 0.9 rem and then line height uh, 1.7 M units. So then once we define that up there, we can simply say at extend and then the name text. So we can copy this here, paste that there, we'll save it, come back, and there we have the same exact result that we had before, except now this is pretty flexible. So all this does is just include those. But if you go to your main.css file where SAS is comp compiling to, we can come down here and we can, um, it's up, actually up here. Right here is where it adds it. It combines them, the card and the sidebar li element into the same uh, rule set essentially, and the same selector. So very handy. Um, and so let's go ahead and just continue on fixing this um, or, or completing the layout rather. I'm gonna add two other properties. So, or var variables rather. Say we'll have a, a primary color here of this color and then a dark primary. You can use the darken function, pass in this variable right here and then just darken it by 20%. That will be for the sidebar. So let's come down here and in the sidebar, we will go ahead and specify grid area is named posts. And then we'll say background. Oh, why did I do that? You do not encase this. There we go. Then we'll say background is going to be darken primary color. I'm gonna lighten the color here. I could have put this in its own variable up top, um, but you could do it here as well. 30% and yeah, that looks pretty good. So let's save that. All right. So you can see we have an issue with a lack of padding in here. So we definitely want to fix that as well. Quickly, I wanna style these little links right here cause they're butt ugly. So um, I'm gonna put in right here, just this, 
nothing too exciting is happening there. There we go. So we have those done. And we also need to specify our layout padding right here. I for, that's the one thing I forgot to do. So our sidebar will be layout padding. And I open up my email. Okay. So now, uh, now we have our padding that's consistent. It's consistent over here, except we multiplied it, multiplied it by 2.5. Um, and then now we have our area down here to work with. So let's do that real quick. Um, our footer, we're going to put our padding there and also our paragraph. We can extend our text. All right. Let's save that finally. That's, that's looking a lot better now. And then we will also come down here. Our H1 was still screwed up. So our H1, I wanted to create an, another ex, uh, extend example because our extend has this, uh, this right here and this right here can also share a couple properties that are common with each other. So those properties would be, um, I want to reset both of their margin top values because this is an H3, this is an H1, and they have their own inherent uh, margin. So I wanna get rid of those. And then I also want to make them both text transform uppercase. All right, so we have two properties to work with and we can use this for an extend. So we'll come back up here and then we'll say, I'm just gonna copy this real quickly cause I'm lazy and we'll call this titles and we'll adjust this to margin top zero and then also text transform uppercase. All right, so we'll take our titles and then we'll come down here. We'll say at extend titles. We're not done yet because there's some, some that are specific to H1, other properties that I'll write, but just to show you what it has done, we need to fix that as well. Uh, we have to add this onto H3. So H3 will extend titles. Now it should be uppercase and there it is. And then some other th specific things, uh, font size, when you make this one 3.5 rem units, um, color will be the primary color. And then margin, we'll just set the bottom. And then um, let's check it out here. There we go. Now it's looking a lot more like our other stuff. So our H3, the only thing I'm gonna change about this is font size 1.3 rem units. We'll save that. And there we go. We could probably stand to adjust these so that um, these are down further. For some reason, I didn't do that. Uh, so let me find that button real quick because that's annoying me. Uh, so we'll do margin top more, yeah, margin bottom. We'll just say like one M unit, see what that does. All right, now it's pushing them a little bit further away so we have a little bit more uh, uh, white space between those elements. All right. Awesome stuff. All right, everybody, hopefully you learned a lot there. Well, maybe not a lot, maybe just one freaking SAS feature, but either way, in the end, let me know what you think. If you approach these things differently, there are different ways to approach that problem of uh, you know, having CSS code that's re uh, very redundant. Uh, one such way is with uh, you know, BEM that you can do block element modifier. You, you approach that in a different manner with, with CSS classes. But either way, let me know what you think, and I will see you guys real soon. As always, subscribe, and I'll see you later. Goodbye.